Lucha Libre is ingrained in our culture. Like you watch that on Sundays. It's like going to church, you know? Some people go to Lucha Libre every week. It's like you were meant to be a wrestler even before you were born. People pay thousands of dollars for people to like pass out flyers, but sometimes I don't even pass them. So I don't pay, I'll do it myself. This is my job full time, 24 seven. Online, not online. Hi. Hello. I'm inviting everybody to come to a show. It's tomorrow here at the Come and Take It Life. It's a wrestling show. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hello. My dear friend. Orale, orale. Ahí a dos, a dos cuadras de aquí. Ok, ahí lo va. No, ya te me diste oh, uno. Sí, okay. Allá, a mi allá me lo diste. Para que traigan a los muchachos, dile que los boletos están baratos. Orale. Ahí sí tienen 15 dólares, vengan. I speak Spanish. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Mexico, so watching telenovelas and watching, you know, TV was very big. Acting was something that I, I enjoy doing. I did uh, theater when I was in, um, in middle school and some in high school, and then I took some classes in college. But I, it was never anything serious. It was kind of like, you know, it's too hard to be, to be a theater person, you know. And uh, wrestling was just like my escape from reality. Sabotage Wrestling is a, almost an all-female wrestling show that my husband and I, we started in October 2016 in California after a huge opportunity came to us and we decided to just, you know, throw a show in less than six weeks and see if it, if it hit <laughs> and if, if we could make it. So it started like that, but it started growing into booking uh, women that are not really well known, that are like local girls that uh, wanna get an opportunity to be seen to like try something different and show the world that, you know, local indie wrestling is it's what's all about and why people should, should follow it. This is not like California. Definitely. No, uh, no, I heard it's a different, 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 no. different atmosphere. I mean, there is smart marks, but not, but only for men wrestling. Not for that and like for big names, yeah, you know. Names. But it's like, where, like, how are they gonna get big if we don't make them stars, no, you know? Right. But I'm really glad I moved here. Like, I feel, I feel it's a good move. When I started, there were very few, and there was only like one space per show for women and usually there was, you know, somebody that was already established was always there and they will bring people that had some name or whatever. But when you start, when you start doing it, it's, it's just, it's like everywhere. It's like who you know and who you talk to, who you like, what influences you have that will get you to places. So um, uh, for me, that, that has been definitely one of the biggest challenges. But I think um, with what my husband and I were doing with Sabotage Wrestling, which is, you know, women's wrestling, intergender wrestling, and bringing that to places where, you know, women's wrestling exists, but it's not as big. I think we, we open more doors for other, uh, other women. There was at a time in, in the mainstream media, WWE especially, and where men and women were actually wrestling, but it was a short time. It was the, on the, in the 90s, and it was popular. But that stopped because it became more of a family family thing. And also because it had to do with, you know, domestic violence and they relate all of that. So I think that's that's where a lot of like, oh, you women need to know your place and uh, men and women should not be on the, on the ring and stuff like that. So it's just, again, it's a reflection of society and people still think that way. People still think that women should not be doing this kind of stuff. But I think we're moving forward in, in society and, and in this business doing where women are allowed to explore other things, you know, and, and it is okay and it should be okay. But we're not there yet. We are making history in the wrestling business in Texas. We are the first ever intergender show in the state of Texas. Thank you so, so much to all of you guys that cut a promo, that promoted the shit out of it, that stick up for us because it takes balls to be in a show like this. And it takes balls for some of you guys to travel miles to be here today. And I'm so proud because Brian and I, we sacrificed everything moving out of California to seek for a dream. And our dream is this, and we're making it happen. Yeah. 
Um, although, like, I'm in, in small arenas. I haven't been in, like, arenas where, like, there's 10,000, 20,000 people. Even when there's 300, 500, 1,000, it's just, like, very nice when people know who you are. They know your name. They say something, oh, I saw you in this place, you know, or, um, like, random people come and they tell you that you uh, inspire them. It's, like, out of this world. I'm really blessed that I have somebody that supports me 100%. That's my husband, and he has he has a regular job, you know, and he's able to support me financially in certain ways. But I've been able to sustain myself with wrestling alone in the last two years. You know, that is like selling merch, traveling, uh, uh, doing uh, extra work, doing a bunch of stuff. You know, you just become a freelancer to make sure that I'm able to make my art my life. In my right corner, Thunder Rosa! When you're watching the match, it's like painting. You have an empty canvas and you can draw the skeleton. But I think um, after certain things that you do, you start like drawing the shadows and like putting the colors and then you can create one of the most beautiful pieces of art that you've ever seen. Like you, you can touch so many people's hearts and you can like, you know, connect emotionally in a way that you will probably you will never be able to do it by doing something else. But if you find, when you find that, that's when you're like, that's when you're like, yeah, I got it. You know, and that for me, that's, that's the art of wrestling. The fact that a lot of people showed up and stayed until the end, it meant a lot. And, um, and yes, I was, I was somewhat emotional because it's been, it's been years of, of promoting and like, you know, talking to people and, and just like getting out there to like, kind of get the, get the gospel of wrestling to everybody. But it was, it was very amazing.